Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to do an early impression video on a Ducita fragrance. Now, uh, Ducita is a house that I am not the biggest fan of. I've made that clear many times before, but um, uh, I do own one bottle from the house. This is basically what their packaging looks like. Very nice packaging, beautiful box. Capskin box, me lord, as you've seen, uh, with the logo on the inside. This is what their bottles look like. Nice bottles. Uh, they come in 50 mils. They're very expensive brand. This is one of those, um, I call them like nouveau rich brands. Almost like reminds me a little bit of uh, the kind of person who would love a fragrance like uh, MFK's releases, Maison Francis Kirk John's, would love Ducita's stuff is basically the way that I look at it. It's not my favorite house, but I did get a great price on this, so I decided to pull the trigger on Isara. Um, but the fragrance that probably suits me more is one that I do not have a full bottle of, um, and it is this. This is Oud Infini. Now, this is a two and a half mil little sampler somebody sent me, which you've seen I've put a pretty good dent in. This is the third time I've given this a full wear, okay? So you can see I put a pretty good dent in this two and a half mil, and then, and two and a half mil is a good size sample, so well done, Ducita, on that. And then um, the other thing that I have is this, and this is a seven and a half mil. Uh, from the house of Ducita, obviously, Oud Infini, uh, and Beautiful Poem, which I'll read you in a second. And so this is the Discovery Atomizer that the house of Ducita sells. Very basic. It's just kind of a normal sort of uh, ad. You can buy these on Amazon for cheap, and I've got probably five mils left. So this is the third full wearing that I've given it, and I think I know the scent well enough to give you a early impression. Remember, I'm not calling this a full review because I don't own a bottle. It's not like I've worn it 10, 20 times or anything. This is just an early impression video. I know the scent well enough to give you my opinion on it and go from there. So here's sort of the um, little blurb, if you will, from the house. And it says, this is the poem that goes with the fragrance. Dawn in the sky, a tiny stream of gold flows and expands imperceptibly until it covers the whole sky and turns itself into silver. Now, not really sure what all that means, but uh, I can tell you the tiny stream of gold reminds me of the sun. And you know what else reminds me of the sun? The rose used here. It's like a giant sun in the sky. Uh, maybe I'm just crazy, but uh, yes, it definitely reminds me a bit of this sun-like feel and the tiny gold expanding in the sky. What else expands in the sky but the damn sun? Uh, so what's interesting about this fragrance, first of all, when people, t when I see people write comments about Oud Infini and stuff like that, usually you get one of two people. Um, one person says, this is the greatest Oud fragrance ever, period. Like that's it. And there's no other Oud fragrances that compete with this. This is the greatest Oud fragrance ever. And to those people, I say, no, this is not the greatest Oud fragrance ever. However, there is something that this fragrance does that um, I feel deserves to be recognized, okay? There's a couple things that this fragrance does that I feel like deserves to be recognized. First thing that it does is that this was the uh, release. This was the, you know, first fragrance the House of Ducita ever put out. And for that, I have to say, bravo, because this is a damn brave first release for a house because this fragrance, when, when you first smell it, um, for people who go, oh my God, that's the best Oud in the game. They don't know Oud, in my opinion. They don't know Oud. Um, now, what you smell when you first smell this is a couple things. But mostly what you smell is this musky, musty, animalic smell, which is basically, in my opinion, it's a mixture of a handful of different animalics. Now, if you go to Parfumo and you pull up the fragrance, it says that the top notes are Laotian Oud, May Rose, and Tunisian Orange Blossom. The heart notes are Benzoin from Siam and Mysore Sandalwood. Mysore Sandalwood, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, base notes are Civet, Bourbon Vanilla Absolute, and Musk. Okay? So, when you first spray this to my nose, it smells like a zoo. It does. It smells like a zoo. It smells like you're smelling skunk oil mixed with... Uh, civet mixed with hyrax, okay? Hyrax is African stone, if you're not familiar with. It's like a petrified rock that 
is literally the excrement of the hyrax. It's called, it ends up being called um, hyracium, okay? And it basically becomes like this fermented rock and it has elements of all of the animalics. So it smells a little bit like musk, a little bit like castorium, a little bit like civet, tobacco, oud, all of these different things, right? Um, and what's interesting about it is obviously the material is harvested, kind of like ambergris, where it doesn't affect the animal at all, because the animal pooped this thing out maybe millennium ago. Who the hell knows, right? Uh, they found high racium stone that's like 50,000 years old, and I guess it can still be used in perfumery. Hell, I don't know. But, um, but it, it gives off this weird sort of, uh, I don't know, like leathery, animalic, weird thing, sparkly weirdness. Uh, it's poop. It's a type of poop. But there's no Hyrax note listed, but I have some animalics here. And one thing that I have is real civet tincture, which I wish you guys could smell this with me. Oh, <laughs> it's so sweet. It's like a, it's like a, it's like if you pissed sweetness. It's like if you pissed a sour sweetness. That's basically what the civet smells like. It smells like sour, pissy sweetness. Um, and you know what's even more sweet, but in an even more disgusting way? Skunk oil. If you've never smelled pure skunk oil, my fucking God, man. Oh my God. It's like, fuck me. Um, it is literally one of the most disgusting things I've ever smelled in my life. Seriously, one of the most disgusting things. The opening of Oud Infini. <laughs> the opening of Oud Infini. Smells like you took Hyrax, and, and by the way, um, I have a zoologist discovery kit here. You get to pick like these discovery atomizer, these discovery things, which are cool. One of them I picked was Hyrax, um, and I'll review this one of these days. But Hyrax uses three animalics in it, and one is civet, and one is Hyrax, and one is castorium. Now, there's no castorium listed in uh, Oud Infini. Man, I can smell like the echo of me just putting that skunk oil to my nose. Oh my God, it's so potent. Like I can still smell it. Um, but Oud, the reason I did all that is because the opening of Oud Infini is not the best Oud in the game, but it's one of the most interesting animalic openings I think I've ever smelled. Um, I've got about an hour dry down here and about a nine hour dry down here. Okay, so I have a deep dry down here. And I can still smell it. This is an X-ray, by the way. So it lasts forever. Um, it lasts forever. And for an X-ray, it projects pretty damn good, too, by the way. So um, this sort of strange blend of musky, musty, uh, animalic sort of opening comes with the oud in the background. Now, the oud is Laotian oud. Laotian oud is what's seen, what... Um, I, I see a lot of brands using Laotian Oud in the um, mid-tier Oud range, okay? So, like, for example, this uses Laotian Oud. This is Diptyque's Oud Palau. This uses Laotian Oud. This is one of the best examples of a Laotian Oud mid-tier fragrance that I can think of. And it's actually, you know, it's not a million miles apart from Oud Infini. Uh, the difference being that this doesn't do the huge animalic civetti opening that this does. But the rose oud, like if you just want, if you want a $100 rose oud that covers many different uh, situations and wares and types and all this stuff, get oud palau. I mean, oud palau is fantastic. I love this stuff. Um, for like a designer type oud, damn good. But this uses Laotian oud apparently. Um, and so does one of my new favorite ouds, which I've talked about in other videos, and I'm very excited to do a full review on this because this is a this is a revelation to me. One of the best, shockingly, one of the best ouds I've new ouds I've smelled recently from a house like this, a house that isn't Ensar or you know Arige or uh, Bortnikov, right? I'm putting those off to the side, but this is Andy Towers La Oud. So this actually uses Laotian oud. Okay, so um, if you've smelled the ouds in those two fragrances, I'm just going to shut the door real quick. So if you've smelled the ouds in those two fragrances, you know that um, 
you kind of have an idea of the Laotian Oud uh, scent profile, if you will, okay? Um, and so Laotian Oud, um, Laotian Oud is kind of in the background when you first spray the fragrance. And so, um, you know, it gives it that sort of weird exotic Oud scent that you've smelled a lot. Not, not like, like I said, not the Ensars, the Arige, the, it's not fair to compare those to, to, to brands like that. Um, but the oud is there, but it's in the background. And so the people who say this is the number one, this is the greatest oud in the game, I don't think they know what they're talking about. In my opinion, I don't think they know what they're talking about. This opens up like sort of a strange milky, uh, well, not milky, but strange mixture between putrid and sweet. This musty sweetness combined. And... Um, for someone like me that likes strange fragrances, the opening of this is, I mean, it's it's challenging. Even for me, it's challenging, right? And it and it absolutely, um, for someone who is not into perfume the way we're into perfume, this will challenge you. I mean, I, I can assume many people smelled this and went, nope, not for me, hell no, get that shit away from me. Not even close, right? Um, and, and so the opening being that, challenging and animalic. If you've ever smelled any of the Kemi fragrances, which I think Zerjoff sort of took under their wing and did away with the Kemi brand. I don't know what's going on, but they were like a subsidiary of Zerjoff and then now Zerjoff took them in and, and made it part of Zerjoff. I don't know what's going on with Kemi. But um, uh, if you've smelled some of Kemi fragrances, they have a little bit of this weird sort of animalic feel that um, you get a little in Oud Infini. And then they take it even further. Um, and, and so imagine taking a diptyque like Oud Palau and mixing it with a Kemi. And that's sort of what you get from Oud Infini in the opening. Okay. Now I want to read you just a little blurb from Fragrantica, the inspiration. Inspired by the allure of exotic adventure and discovery, conjuring an aura of mystery resonant with a sensual Rose de Mai, an irresistible new oud accord with a rich, rare, and exhilarating fragrance. Okay, so let's talk about this sensual rose de mai because let me set the scene for you. This is how you can imagine how this smells. It's actually a really hard thing to describe this. So I hope you appreciate the work that went into this. So imagine that you took some of this skunk oil and let's say you're, you've got a hot date tonight, okay? And you're over here looking for like something nice like a rose or some jasmine or maybe something like that. And you're looking through and you find the skunk oil and you're like, oh shit, I'm going to go ahead and smell this because why not? And you open it and it spills. You're like, fuck, I have a date tonight. What do I do? I I'm covered in skunk oil. Or maybe it happens with the civet, you know, P take your pick. And so you go, you know what? I'm going to take some rose de mai and I'm going to try to cover it up. And you put rose de mai over the civet. And then your father perfumer, I don't know why he's your father, it just depends on how old you are, uh, maybe your roommate, maybe your friend, maybe your brother, he's a perfumer, he walks in and goes, what are you doing, dude? You're just putting rose, you can't just put rose de mai on top of that. You have to put like some orange blossom absolute or something else on there. So he puts some orange blossom on and he's trying to cover the scent of skunk oil because it's impossible to scrub skunk oil off of your hand. Impossible, okay? Um impossible to scrub it off. It'll be there for a day. So try to cover it up is the better thing to do, right? So they mix it in with um, some rose de mai. Beautiful, by the way. Beautiful rose de mai. The rose, if you notice the rose, like I said, look look at what she decided to go with for the um, picture. It's not oud. It's, even though the name is oud infinity, the picture is rose. A green, look at the outline too. Green rose, thick, big. Um, this rose just feels like it sits on everything, like it has a weight, you know, like um, you're smelling the oud and it's there. The Laotian oud is there, sort of in the background, um, but with that weird exotic oud thing that it tries to do, uh, probably some ambers and stuff like that. Um, they do say this is a amber type fragrance and, and maybe there is a little bit of amber in the late dry down. Um, but 
it just wants you to imagine the rose just sort of sitting on everything, just like weighing it down, you know. Um, the rose feels slightly green, slightly wet, slightly, um, slightly red. Look at the different colors of red too, by the way. Look, it's like deep red in some places, it's dark red in others, it's blended with green in others, it's, it's actually a pretty damn good descriptor of how the rose literally smells in the scent. Um, it, 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 it is sensual. It is seductive. There is something, I would say, um, like this come here, this sexualized come here from the rose. Um, because underneath it is that weird animalic civet, musky, um, sort of, um, you know, skunk oil, hyrax mixture thing that I just came up with in my head. But I think it's a day, if you've ever smelled real skunk oil, You'll, and you've smelled uh, Oud Infinite, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's this weird uh, sweetness about it. Weird putrid meets sweet. Uh, sour meets sweet, right? It's very strange. It's a weird contrast. Um, and this is a complex scent. So for me to try to review it in three full wearings is not easy. Uh, but that's the way that it feels to me. It Literally, the opening feels like you're standing in a zoo. Like you're standing in a... Um, like you're standing in like the habitat of one of these animals. Like you've ever seen like a meerkat habitat. You know how they always look like dusty and dirty and weird and probably smell weird. Um, you know, it, it feels a little bit like that. And then, but, and, but above it is this beautiful rose. And just imagining the rose lowering, you know, like the rose is slowly coming down on this animalic opening. And as it comes down, the, the shelf life of this animalic opening gets less and less and less until the weight of the rose just sits on it. And so, since you're the idiot that tried to cover it up first with the rose de mai, you just dumped it on. And rose de mai is like the overall sort of note that you end up getting. Um, the rose really does stand to, tend to stand out. The orange blossom, I think it's there more for contrast. So your perfumer friend, or perfumer father, depending on how old you are, comes in and tries to fix things, but he knows not to just dump it on. He just tries to put a little bit on, you know, for contrast and blend, mix it in, right? That's the way the fragrance smells and wears to me. Now, there is a little bit of benzoin to add a little bit of warmth, and that's where this sort of ambery, little bit of vanilla tends to come from, um, from the fragrance. But it really feels like it dries down to a musk oud, like a musk oud. So as the fragrance goes on, the oud tends to come out a little bit more, as does the musk, um, and you know it. It's uh, it. It is an alluring for. I mean, here's the thing: this fragrance is now discontinued, and and I feel like I'm kicking myself for not buying a bottle. Like I wish I would have got a bottle, but I still don't want to pay three or four hundred for it. If I could find a bottle for a hundred, I think that's fair, and I know that's way cheap. But um, if I could find half a bottle for a hundred, I think that's fair. But honestly. I have uh, the, I'll show you how much of the decant I have left. Beautiful color. I love, look at the color. I love it. I love the color of this. There's something just, you know, look how deep and rich it looks. And that's sort of how it wears, but even more animalic than you would think. And it's interesting, she says that until it covers the whole sky and turns itself silver is, is the poem, right? And, and it starts off with dawn in the sky, not dusk dawn uh and so that that as like i was mentioning the rose looks like a sun to me in this in the sky right so imagine as the sun comes up at dawn the rose gets heavier and heavier so as the sun goes up the rose gets heavier and comes down on the scent um and turns itself into silver now the silver may be referenced to some sort of musk or i don't know i don't understand the whole silver part but i can tell you that the fragrance uh, the fragrance is strangely alluring. So when you smell it up close, especially if you're uh, not used to animalic fragrances, you're going to be put off by the opening, 100%, if you're new. Even if you're not new to perfume, uh, the opening is one of those where you just have to kind of laugh and go, <laughs> all right, that is an opening, my friends. Um, and then what ends up happening is that rose comes down, the weight of that green heavy, almost like a rose that's just been filled with water, you know, and it's just ready to overflow. And as it overflows, it covers up all of that civet and 
skunk oil and um, you know Hyrax, um, our friend the Hyrax right there. Look at that cute little guy. Um, and so yes, it's a very uh, I think it's a daring bold fragrance, and I and I give I have to give her full marks for having the intestinal fortitude to release this scent as her first fragrance from the house. Um, is it the best oud in the game? No, it's not that. Uh, in fact, it's probably more comparable to mid-range ouds, okay? Uh, so I can't say it's the best oud in the game, but is it an interesting perfume? Yes, it is. It's much more interesting than what she's been putting out, I'll tell you that, in my opinion. Um, now, I'm not a professional expert on the House of Ducita or anything, but um, I do have some more samples from the house, so I'll talk about more at some point. But um, yeah, that's sort of the way the fragrance just, you know, sort of uh, develops from the first three. I've only given this three wears. This is the third full wear. Um, and I said, you know what? I'm going to do a video on this today, which is usually how my videos go, just spur of the moment. Also, I have to say thank you to Hari. Uh, he sent me a lot of really cool decants. Like, for example, he sent me, I opened these before the video. Uh, he sent me things like Oud Yusuf by Ensar, which is very rare and hard to find. Uh, he sent me Kinam, Kinam Urjwani from the House of Agar Aura. Again, very rare and hard to find, expensive. Um, and he sent me some Grossmith perfumes, which, and a book, a very cool Grossmith book, which I'm very excited to sort of dive into Grossmith's um, other fragrance lines because I was so impressed with Hasu no Hana. If I, if money was no issue, I would buy, a, I would buy every single Grossmith I can get my hands on right now. They remind me of like old Guerlain style, like very classy fragrances. So uh, thank you, Hari, for that, my friend. Um, so anyways, thanks to everyone for watching. If you have experience with um, Oud Infini, do leave a message, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I love hearing your thoughts. I love seeing your faces. We're still small enough. I can respond to every single comment. Um, let me know what you think of the House of... Ducita, let me know what you think of Oud Infini. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.